Okay. So thank you all for joining. This is the first time we are using a Arabic uh, English interpreter. And as of the next uh, simulation, we will also have, hopefully we'll have a Hebrew uh, Arabic, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, English Arabic and English Hebrew interpreter. So, uh, Thank you all for joining. This is the Israeli-Palestinian Confederation simulation. We are simulating how a common government for the people of Israel and Palestine could make peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians based on a common government based on secular democratic principles uh, that uh, would include the entire area of Israel, the West Bank, Gaza, and Jerusalem, 14 million people. So that it is clear, we are not uh, uh, advocating for the dismantling of the Israeli government or the Palestinian government. We are advocating for the creation of a common government for the people of Israel and Palestine that would exist side by side with the Israeli and the Palestinian governments. And we are here to demonstrate how this government could function, how it could be democratic, and how it could make peace, not only between Israel and the Palestinians, but also with the entire uh, region in, around Israel and Palestine. My name is Joseph Avisar, and my email is josephavisar at gmail.com. I would very much appreciate receiving uh, comments from you after the simulation. Uh, this is our website, ipconfederation.org. If you go to the it's in three languages. If you go to English and you go to the constitution, and by the way, it's in the same, in same similar in every language, you would be able to read how this confederation government, a common government would exist, how it would become a reality, how the election will take place, that it includes the whole area of Israel, the West Bank, Gaza, and Jerusalem, based on equality. One person, one vote for the 14 million people. The, uh, the constitution states that it would be a secular government with three branches, the executive branch, which is the president and vice president, the legislative branch, that's the branch that makes the laws, which would, is the parliament and the judicial branch, which are the judges. Uh, and all of them based on equality between Palestinians and Israelis together. And this would be a secular government, which means that it would separate between religion and government. So you can also go to the question, uh, frequently asked questions, it explains how this government will work in a simpler uh, uh, question and answer format. Today we have uh, Jonathan Katib, Kutab, I'm sorry will be uh, speaking about what we will be presenting to him in terms of the constitution, in terms of the creation of this government and in terms of legislation. Jonathan Kutab is a leading Palestinian human rights lawyer and a non-resident fellow at the Arab Center at Washington DC. He's the co-founder of Al Haq the first international human rights legal organization in Palestine and of the Palestinian Center 
for the Study of Nonviolence. Mr. Kutab is the Executive Director of FOSNA, Friends of Sabil, North America, a Christian ecumenical organization seeking justice and peace in the Holy Land through education, advocacy, and nonviolence action. Mr. Kutab is the author of the book, Beyond the Two-State Solution, um, which was dis described by Rabbi Lynn Gottlieb. Some were trapped by the past. This book opens the gate to the future. John Quigley, who by the way will be one of our guests as well, of Mortiz College of Law at Ohio State wrote, whatever your position about the conflict between Arab and Jew, Kutab will make you rethink it. Mr. Kutab is a resident of East Jerusalem for many years. We are inviting many people to participate regardless of their point of view because we want uh, our formula for peace to be test, uh, tested, stress tested. So our next, uh, next time with Sami Smuha is a professor uh, at, uh, of uh, sociology at uh, Haifa University. Hopefully at that time, we will also have a Hebrew interpreter in addition to the Arabic interpreter. Uh, so Sami Smurha will be on February 20th, 2022. Uh, professor Alon Ben Meir will be, is a political science professor at New York University. He will be on March 6th, 2022. Uh, Shibli Telhami, um, who is a professor at Maryland University, will be our guest on March 20th, 2022. Uh, Mona Halil, will be our guest on April 10. Uh, she's a public international lawyer for, uh, of Palestinian origin and has for 25 years uh, with the United Nations. She has experience with the United Nations for 25 years. And then John Quigley, a professor of law on April 24, 2022. He's a expert on Arab-Israeli relations and human rights. And then we'll have Lawrence Wilkinson, who, is the chief, who was the chief of staff for the late Secretary of State Colin Powell on May uh, 8, 2022. Um, and then we'll have some more. Uh, the estimated time for this simulation is including the question and answers and the discussion afterwards is 120 minutes. Um, so the way it works, is we will have segments and each segment will have question and answer and then we'll have a vote and then we'll have Mr. Kutab opine on what just took place. And then we'll have a conversation with Mr. Kutab and uh, question and answer. Uh, for those of you who arrived late, uh, if you uh, wish to listen to this uh, simulation in English, please go to the interpretation icon and click English. If you want to listen in Arabic, please uh, click Arabic. Uh, I'll just have uh, uh, Tahseen, could you please Thank you. So we have a short video that explains what the Confederation is all about, the common government. It's two and a half minutes. The conflict between Israelis and Palestinians has endured for generations. And instead of time healing the wounds, it's only caused the anger to fester and the violence to grow. But what if there was a way to alleviate the tension? Something that may not outright solve every problem, but at least create a forum that encourages a peaceful compromise. Welcome to the Israeli-Palestinian Confederation, a common third government between the Israeli and Palestinian citizens, 
specifically designed to foster peace, tolerance, and economic prosperity between the two nations. Here's how it works. First off, both Israel and Palestine will keep their respective governments. Israelis Knesset and the Palestinian National Authority will remain unchanged. The Israeli-Palestinian Confederation, IPC, will be a third entity acting as a unifying agent between the two. The IPC will comprise 300 parliament members elected from 300 districts in Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza. Above them will preside a president and vice president, one Israeli and one Palestinian. In order for the IPC to pass a law, it will require a 55% majority from its Israeli representatives, as well as a 55% majority from its Palestinian representatives, thereby preventing either side from monopolizing the legislature. Of course, the IPC won't undermine the political power of either the Israeli or the Palestinian government. At any time, Israel or Palestine may veto a law passed by the IPC. If neither side vetoes, the law is passed and the two nations are another step closer to resolution. Please help us make this a reality. The Israeli-Palestinian Confederation. We might speak different languages, but we all mean the same thing. So the objective of the simulation is to demonstrate how the common government could make peace between Israelis and Palestinians and the entire neighborhood. Uh, we are not here to have a historical review of who is to blame. We are not anti-Israel or anti-Palestinians. We are pro-peace. Uh, Mr. Kutab is not a representative of the IPC. In fact, I don't really know what his position is. He was invited to stress test. We are going to present to him the, the constitution and legislation and we will ask his opinion, but he's not the representative of the IPC. He does not speak on behalf of the IPC. We are pro-peace. Uh, we follow our own narrative and we expect that the, when the Israeli-Palestinian Confederation government will be created, it will follow its own narrative. It's not going to be Israeli or Palestinian. It's going to have its own narrative, and it should, because it is. it would be a government for the whole area of Israel, the West Bank, Gaza, and Jerusalem, and it will have its own narrative. It will have its own point of view. So that we are, it's clear, we are not precluding other options for peace or other formulas for peace. We are not, uh, we think that all options should be on the table, but we think that our option is the best option. And that's why we are proposing our option. But we think that a common, gov a common parliament could come up with, could accept other options, uh, re uh, including the Israeli or the Palestinian options or including agreements between them. This is what we are going to be asking Mr. Kutab to chat to, to judge our plan based on these three criteria. Could the IPC formula attain peace? That's the first one. Is the IPC plan implementable? That's the second one. And the third one, is there a downside for either the Israelis or the Palestinians? That's the third one. We believe that the answer to the first one and the second one is yes, absolutely yes. And we think that the answer to the third one is no. And this is what we will be asking Mr. Kutab to judge everything that we do based on these three criteria. Always come back to these three criteria. Um, we are, so that it's clear, we are not a, the government. We are only, uh, proposing legislation. This is only a simulation. It's not a speech. You will be asked to participate. We are not the government and we are only proposing legislation to demonstrate how it will work. And what we are showing today, because we are limited by time, is the tip of the iceberg. We have a lot more legislation that we are able to show you today. Uh, we are asking you to look at the big picture avoid technical arguments. A lot of times people start arguing technical issues. 
Um, we are here to look at the big pictures. We're asking you to suspend reality and to look at the big pictures with us. If you want to ask uh, detailed technical questions, please put that on the chat or email me and I'll respond. We have answers to the technical question, but we don't want to get into technicalities here. We're asking that you will refrain from comments. Questions are okay and are encouraged, but comments, please use the chat feature for comments. And we are asking you to uh, ask questions. That's fine. What is the difference between a question and a comment? If I show you a picture of an airplane and you say, Joseph, how does this thing fly? That's a question. That's fine. We are encouraging you to ask questions throughout the simulation. However, if you say, I will never board an airplane because airplanes cause pollution, that's a comment. Please wait for your comment, put your comment at the end or put it in the chat feature. Um, again, uh, just a reminder, uh, if you wish to listen to this in English, go to the English interpretation, to the interpretation icon and click on English. Uh, Tahsin, could you please uh, make that announcement? Uh, by the way, we have an excellent interpreter. He interpreted for President Carter when President Carter was in the area, so in, in, in uh, Israel, Palestine. Okay, these are, in order for this simulation to work, we have to assume a certain assumptions, make certain assumptions and accept certain facts. So the first fact is that the Israeli prime minister represents the Israelis only. The second fact is that the Palestinian leaders represent the Palestinian only. These are facts. I don't think anybody would agree with them. However, in order for this simulation to work, you will have to assume certain things. And at the end of the uh, uh, simulation, you can challenge those assumptions. But for the purpose of the simulation, in order to make it successful, I'm asking you to assume these things. First of all, that we had an online elections that uh, that ended three months uh, that lasted three months and just ended and the online election was for 14 million people in Gaza Jerusalem West Bank and Israel total of 14 million people that was just concluded you also have to assume that five million people voted three million Palestinian voted and two million Israeli voted 5 million out of the 14 million people voted. You'll also have to assume that the president received one and a half million vote and the vice president. So you'll have to assume that, uh, that uh, me, Joseph was elected as president, but let me assure you, I do not intend to ever run for president. I'm not even qualified based on the constitution, but I, in order to facilitate the conversation, I am putting myself as the president, but I, I'm not planning to be the president in, real, in, in the real situation. So you have to assume that I was elected by one and a half million vote and a vice president, a Palestinian lady was elected by 1.3 million votes and we will have to rotate after two years. She will become the president and I will become the vice president. And we each have constitutional duties. If you go to the constitution in the website, you'll see each person, the president and vice president have its own constitutional duties. You'll also have to assume that 300 parliament members were elected in Israel, the West Bank, Gaza, and Jerusalem. And I will ask most of you to act as parliament member. Remember, this is not a lecture, even though it probably sound like a lecture, it's not a lecture, I'm asking you to participate and I'll ask you to participate even more uh, very, very in a few seconds. If you are a parliament member, you will have to, you represent 47,000 people. You don't represent the entire 
uh, nation of Israel or the Palestinian, you only, uh, you only represent your district and you'll have to think in terms of benefits to your district. So does anyone have any questions regarding those assumptions? You can ask later. Uh, Mr. Kutab, are you willing to accept those uh, assumptions for the purpose of the simulation? I have no choice. I'm to sorry? To play the game, I have to accept those assumptions. So I you have are some, accepting them. I have some problems with, with, with the whole game. Uh, I think it's fundamentally flawed, but I'll be able to talk about that when I get the chance. Okay. For the purpose of this simulation, are you willing to accept that? I have to. Okay, thank you. Uh, are the audience willing to accept? Is there anyone in the audience that is not willing to accept the simulation, uh, the assumptions? Okay, I hear no complaints. Uh, so the entire simulation is based on the acceptance of those assumptions. Uh, so in order for this simulation to work, I need volunteers. I need someone to act as prime minister of Israel, someone to act as Hamas leader, someone to act as a PA leader. And let me tell you what they do, why we need them. We try to, we try to have as, as much uh, options in this discussion. So the, the leaders, the Israeli prime minister, the Hamas leader, and the Palestinian authority leaders, they will be given in this simulation the power to veto the legislation that we are passing. So that's, that would be your role, is to, to veto or not veto. Hopefully not veto, but you, you have to assume the personality of the prime minister of Israel, the political personality, the Hamas leader, the PA leader. You'll have to just enter their shoes and act in this simulation in those capacities. Uh, so the first, and I, uh, this time I would like to have people that have not volunteered before. Um, do we have a person that is willing to be a Hamas leader? Is that, uh, I saw Stephen Simon raised your hand. Am I correct? Stephen, have you agreed to be Hamas leader? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, do I have prime minister of Israel? Do I have someone who, I don't see, I'm sorry, I, 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 it's hard for me to see because I have the PowerPoint presentation in front of me. So if you can speak up, it will be easier for me. Do we have uh, Prime Minister of Israel? Please speak up. Someone who hasn't worked, someone who hasn't done it before. All you have to decide is, are you willing to uh, be, to act as prime minister of Israel, and you'll have to, uh, you'll be given an opportunity to veto or not veto legislation. So could I hear from someone? I need volunteers, it's important. I could, I could do it if uh, nobody else will. Oh, have you done it before, Nasir? I've been president of Palestine, but I've never been prime minister of Israel. So, okay. I mean, I give the opportunity to anybody else if they want to do it. Is there anyone else who wants to do this? Okay. We, I don't hear anybody else. How about a PA leader? Palestinian Authority leader. I need a volunteer to be the Palestinian Authority leader. Did I hear from someone? Do I have a volunteer 
to act, to assume the personality of uh, Mahmoud Abbas as the uh, 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 Palestinian Authority leader. I need someone. Abraham wrote in the text that he would uh, speak for the Hamas leader, but maybe he will, since someone else did it, maybe he can be the Palestinian president, but he's away from his chair. So I don't know if he's not here. Okay. Maybe uh, we can ask him when he comes uh, back. Let me ask, uh, Stephen, are you willing to be the Palestinian Authority leader? Oh, there he is. Stephen? As for myself, it would be much too difficult a task to accomplish. Okay. okay, Dr. Weisfeld, are you willing to be the Palestinian Authority leader? No, like I just said, you know, like it would be much too difficult a task. More difficult than me being the Israeli Prime Minister? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Or me being the Hamas leader. Okay, so let's 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 move on. Um, uh, Abraham, you're willing to be the Hamas leader? Yes, but there is already a Hamas leader declared, is there not? Oh, yes. yes, there is. Uh, but I thought I'll switch. Okay, so you will be the Palestinian Authority leader. Is that okay? Explanation would be. Yeah. Okay, I am assigning you as the. To whom? To whom are you making this assignment? Okay, uh, Dr. Weisfeld, you are the Palestinian Authority leader. Oh my, okay. Even you are the Hamas leader. In Nasir, you're the Israeli prime minister. Okay. All right, let's move on. Um, the rest of you, I'm asking you to be either Israeli uh, parliament member or Palestinian parliament members. Uh, you'll have to, I, I brought this map to help you decide what city you want to represent. Um, so you'll have to decide you want to be Israeli uh, parliament member or Palestinian parliament member. Look at this map. You could be a parliament member from Gaza, from Han Yunus, from uh, Ramallah, from Tulkarem, from Tel Aviv. Regard so if you are from Gaza, for instance, you, your constituents, your 47,000 people are Palestinians, but if you are from Jerusalem, they could be both Israelis and Palestinians. And I'm asking you to, to be honest in your own mind, who do you represent? What is your district? Is your district exclusively Israeli or your district exclusively Palestinian or is it a mixed district? And I want you to remain when we take the vote with that frame of mind of who, who, who is your uh, constituent. And remember, as a parliament member, you don't represent yourself, you represent your district. Mm -hmm. So let's just take a um, sample vote. So it's clear, let's have the uh, vote, uh, the Palestinian parliament members, please vote first. This is just uh, as an experiment. Please vote the Palestinian parliament members. So Joseph, did you explain that people need to choose whether they're going to be a Palestinian or represent a Palestinian or an Israeli district primarily? Okay. Um, so we have, right now we have 20 Palestinian parliament members, and let's have the Israeli parliament members vote. Okay, publish the vote. We have 15 Israeli parliament members. 
Now, some of you des may decide to not participate until you see what's going on. That's fine. Uh, you can join in later as either Israeli or Palestinian. And let me show you the map one more time. And I'm asking you to decide in your own mind uh, what area you are representing. And I may ask you, what is your area? What is your district? If we get to that discussion. Um, so, uh, again, uh, uh, I don't think we have any, yeah, we had some late uh, uh, people that joined late. If you want to uh, participate in English, please go to the interpretation uh, icon and click English. Uh, Tahsin, could you make the announcement in Arabic? Thank you. Okay, so the first order of business is the constitution. Uh, Libby, uh, this is a two page docu uh, document. Could you please read the, um, uh, the constitution uh, 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 for the audience and then Tahsin will uh, interpret the Arabic portion. Libby, please. We believe that Palestinians and Israelis are entitled to equal rights under the law and guaranteed human rights and freedom. The Israeli-Palestinian Confederation does not intend to supersede or supplant the Palestinian or Israeli governments, nor to abrogate or undermine any agreements between those governments. We recognize the need to work with the Israeli and Palestinian governments. Our purpose is to resolve conflicts and to expand the relationship between Palestinians and Israelis in a fair and equitable manner. We believe in equal rights under the law, guaranteed human rights and freedom for all. And if there is more, I can't see. Uh, yeah, let me. Page two. We voluntarily give the legislators and the governments of Israel and Palestine veto power over legislation we pass relating to the domain of control of those governments. We believe in the separation of power between the legislative, executive, and judicial branches. We believe in the creation of a permanent secular government for all the people residing in Israel and Palestine. We believe in having a separate judicial branch relating to IPC legislation with Israeli and Palestinian judges with a system to avoid biased decisions based on nationality. Thank you, Libby. So basically the important part of the constitution, this is this is not the language of the constitution itself. This is a description of what the constitution says, um, is that the Israeli-Palestinian Confederation government, first of all, would not get involved and would not supersede or supplant or disturb any agreement between the Israeli and the Palestinian governments. So whatever they agree between themselves is fine with us. We are not constitutionally, we are prohibited from interfering with those agreements. So if they agree on two states, if they agree on a border, if they agree on a one state, whatever they agree, we are accepting that constitutionally. We cannot undermine those agreements. And the second important thing is that whenever we pass legislation, that has to do with the domain or control of those governments, those legislation would be given a veto power to the, to the Israeli and the Palestinian government. So if we pass any legislation that 
interfere with the domain and control of those governments, they will have a veto power. And if they exercise the veto, they will not, th th those legislation will not pass. So that's the important part of the constitution. Um, does anyone have any question regarding the constitution? And I also want to encourage uh, those that are listening in Arabic to ask questions. Does anyone have any questions before we take a vote? I have a question. Yes, yes. Uh, hi, um, yes. Right. Uh, I want to ask a very simple um, question. Yes. Bearing yes. in mind that Israel is not a democratic state, is an apartheid state, um, the fact that um, the uh, Confederation accepts that um, and does not challenge the legislative uh, basis of settler colonialism makes the whole um, experiment. What is the question? Odd. Chaim, what is the question? The question is how can you have um, a democratic structure when the basis is not democratic? Uh, the, we are a separate government for the people of Israel, West Bank, Gaza, and Jerusalem. The basic of our government is not the Israeli government. It's not the Palestinian government. It is our own government. We are 14 million people in Israel, the West Bank, Gaza, and Jerusalem. What we are saying is, we are accepting the Israeli government and the Palestinian government because they exist. And we do not think that it is possible or desirable to dismantle those governments because we do not think that people would be joining our, the, the Israeli-Palestinian government if they feel that we intend to dismantle the Israeli or the Palestinian government. So basically we are willing to accept those governments in order to facilitate our government, to help us with our government to be created. Any other questions? Okay, hearing no questions, I we have are a, going to go real, to a real, Real quick question, um, yes, Joseph. Um, uh, my question is, um, would you say that the idea of the Confederation is part of the solution, not the solution? Because I think when people look at this, they say, oh, this is the solution, but we have these other problems and elements, but this is part of a solution, not the solution. Well, I think it is the solution, but it is but incrementally. Since yeah, since it's incrementally since, will deal with mm -hmm. issues. But since it's it doesn't not just you vote for a confederation government mm -hmm. and you push a button and everything becomes it, exactly because it doesn't preclude it doesn't preclude a two state solution or a one state solution. It's just something that's there to uh, that doesn't preclude any type of uh, uh, solution as far as what the people in the future decide. Right. It point. doesn't preclude any other. I, I said that uh, before. It doesn't preclude the governments from agreeing, but it it recognizes the reality of the Israeli government and the Palestinian government. But it says, well, regardless, those governments fail to give peace. So we are we believe that in order to give peace is we have to get together the Israelis and the Palestinian people together to make peace. And we have to recognize reality. And the reality is that those governments exist. Any other questions? So let's go to a vote. I have a question. OK, please, please uh, interpret that. Uh, uh, الالتزام بقرارات الشرعية الدولية هو مفتاح الحل للسلام وشكرا We are not precluding any other resolution we are not precluding international 
resolution, but we are saying that for peace, you need to uh, create a common government for the people of Israel and Palestine. Um, as far as other options, we are not precluding them. Any other, um, any other um, questions? So let's Jonathan, go to a Jonathan, vote. Jonathan uh, Khatib had his hand up and wanted to say something. I'm sorry? Yeah. Uh, is, is this constitution part of the assumption for this stimulation? No, the assumption okay. is that we have a, 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 we had the election that 14 million people were allowed to vote, that 5 million people voted, that 300 parliament members were elected, and we are, and, and a president and vice president were elected, and we are now subsequent, we are after the election, and we have the parliament, and the parliament is now voting on the constitution. And that's what I'm asking. The, we have Palestinian parliament, we have a parliament member, we have Israeli parliament member. So we are now after the election, and it's after the, um, after the uh, assumptions. This is, since we already are uh, elected, we are now voting on the, on the uh, constitution. Can we have the vote, please? Let's have the Palestinian people, parliament member, vote first. Do you accept the, do you ratify the constitution? Palestinian parliament members. Okay, can you publish the vote? Okay, so 92%, uh, 12 out of, uh, we have 20, so eight did not vote at all. Uh, I mean, seven did not vote at all. Uh, so the, the Palestinian uh, voted in favor of ratifying the constitution. Can we have the Israeli parliament members vote now? Let's publish the vote. I just want to make sure that if you are a uh, Israeli prime minister, Hamas leader, or Palestinian authority, you are not allowed to vote. You are not part of our government. You're a separate government. So I just want to make clear because I see no, some no votes, very few on the Israeli side and the Palestinian side. Um, so I suspect that people that are not allowed to vote are voting. But 90% um, of the Israeli parliament members voted in favor of this constitution. Uh, just so that you know, in real, if this, in real life, those that voted no uh, will be uh, uh, impeached. They will not be part of the confederation parliament because you cannot be part of a parliament where you do not accept the constitution, just like any other democracy. If you are running for Congress or Senate in the United States and you do not accept the US uh, constitution, you cannot be a senator or a congressman. So those that voted um, no, in real life will be expelled from the constitution and the person who received a vote in his dignity to opine on what just took place. Mr. Kutab? Yes. Uh... I've been I've been waiting to say something about the structure itself of this simulation. Uh, I believe it is fundamentally flawed because it treats the Palestinian Authority and Hamas separately or collectively as as a government when they are not. Uh, 
so it treats them as if they are something other. It's still a very fascinating stimulation. It's it's like playing chess uh, with uh, four castles and no rooks. It's a fun game, but it doesn't relate to reality on the ground. The reality on the ground today is that neither the Palestinian Authority nor Hamas, nor both of them combined, constitute a government at all. They exist at the will and at the command of Israel. They are part of the structures that were created by Israel to maintain its control and to maintain the illusion, the facade, the hope of a two-state solution, which I think everybody now recognizes is not going to happen. Uh, so yes, we do need to think of new models, but the new models have to reflect reality and not just fantasy. And I'm afraid that this simulation is fundamentally flawed because it accepts a version of what is going on today as if it was reality when uh, it, it does not reflect the reality on the ground. So you're saying that uh, th that it's the reality on the ground is that the Hamas, uh, uh, Hamas and the PA are not real government, and Correct. therefore um, it's Correct. not uh, Correct. They, reasonable. They don't have. Okay. Uh, they don't right, have. But, uh, we are a separate government. If there is no, um, it would be up to us. The parliament member, we voted to. So let's go to the next issue, okay. and which will deal with exactly what you just said. And first of all, we are a separate government for the people of Israel and Palestine, and we need to uh, pledge allegiance to our government. So I am the president. I'm going to pledge allegiance. I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of president of the Israeli-Palestinian Confederation and will to the best of my ability, preserve, protect and defend the constitution of the Israeli-Palestinian Confederation. So I'm asking you now the parliament member, Palestinian and Israelis to raise either your biological hand or your virtual hand and take the oath. I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute my duties as a legislator for the Israeli-Palestinian parliament and will to the best of my ability, preserve, protect and defend the constitution of the Israeli-Palestinian Confederation. Let's, so let's take a vote on that. Uh, it, pa Palestinian parliament members, do you swear allegiance to the Palestinian Confederation constitution? Joseph, I'm not getting anything for the poll. Nothing. I'm not getting any polls. Okay. So I see. Um, can you publish the result? Um, so the person who voted no, uh, he will be expelled from the uh, from the parliament because he cannot proceed as a parliament member when he's not willing to uh, pledge allegiance. Um, so thank you. Let's have the, uh, so just for the record, 93% of the Palestinian parliament members voted yes. Let's go to the um, Israeli parliament members. Uh, let's end the polling. Share the result. A hundred percent of the Israeli parliament members voted in favor of um, uh, pledging allegiance to the constitution. Thank you so much. Let's go to the first order of business. Now that we have uh, a parliament, people should remember to, re people should remember to re uh, remove the hand. Okay. So the first issue of is business is to give a veto power. This is a legislation and it does not give 
the the legislation to give a veto power is not sub, is not subject to a veto power by the Israeli and the Palestinian government because it's internal to us. So the confederation is the government of the entire population of Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza. We hereby bestow a veto power relating to legislation affecting sovereignty to the following. The government of Israel, the Palestinian Authority, and Hamas. We decide on our own to give them a veto power. And does anyone have any question regarding that, uh, this declaration to grant them a veto power? Okay, okay, hearing no questions, I am going to, uh, let's take a vote. Uh, Palestinian parliament members, do you support the declaration to intend a grant of veto power to the government of Israel, the Palestinian Authority and Hamas? Okay, let's uh, end the polling, publish the result. 92% of the Palestinian parliament members agree to give a veto power uh, to the government of Israel, the Palestinian Authority and Hamas. Let's go to the uh, Israeli parliament members. Please vote on the same issue. Do you support the declaration or intend to grant the veto power? Okay, so, um, Let's publish the result. 100% of the Israeli parliament members agreed to give a veto power. Uh, so this, uh, thank you so much. So this basically answered what Mr. Kutab said and Mr. and Haim said at the beginning. We are a common government, but on we understand the reality and we agreed to give a veto power to those governments to the Israeli government and Hamas government and the Palestinian Authority. So now, Mr. Kutab, that your uh, objection- it really does not answer my uh, objection because the Palestinian Authority, the agreements that it has signed with Israel prohibits it from playing this type of game because it specifies concretely that it shall not seek any kind of agreement outside the framework of the signed agreements. In other words, uh, this game, very fascinating, interesting, does not have any relation to reality on the ground. Uh, in, in Harry Potter, uh, Mr. Kutab, uh, there is a- the, the reality uh, on the ground- No, 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 please allow me to finish. In Harry Potter, there is a uh, place where uh, Harry Potter is playing with uh, the secret map. And before he does it, uh, you're supposed to swear, I solemnly swear that I am up to no good uh, before you can activate the magic uh, of the plan. Uh, so yes, you can swear in the during this simulation uh, that, that you are willing to play within those uh, rules, but they have no relation to the reality on the ground. As a PA representative, I can contest that opinion because the agreement that was signed in 1993, the Oslo Agreement, was specified upon a five-year timetable in which Israel was due to re recognize the state of Palestine, which did not. Therefore, the agreement is void. And therefore, yes, the- uh, uh, but, uh, I have no problem with that, but the assumptions of this game is that they will not mess with the agreements that were signed between the Israel and the Palestinian uh, Authority. As I just that mentioned, that agreement, there. Is void. that agreement is void now because Israel did not fulfill its obligations. It's a legal obligation and it did not fulfill it. Therefore, the agreement is void. Okay, there, no problem. No with could could, could no I ask a question, Joseph, about this? Um, I don't the, want to have a discussion. We'll yeah. have a discussion at the end. We're going but, to go to the next legislation. But it's a question about this specific to Mr. Kutab's concern. Now, if, for example, the confederation in the declaration say that the Palestinians have an independent government that actually does represent Palestine, then we would be able to change that it's the government of Israel and the government of Palestine rather than the Palestinian Authority and Hamas, which we have today. 
Correct. We we could. Uh, this is a, a legislation. We can change the legislation. We believe at this time that the, the, the governments that have power are the government of Israel, the Palestinian Authority and Hamas. And we want to get their cooperation to make peace. Our goal is to make peace. And we do not want to be enemies with those entities. So therefore we give them a veto power. But let's go to the next legislation. And that's a declaration of peace. Uh, Libby, do you want to read this Declaration of Peace, please? Our goal is to be a shining example for peace and tolerance. We believe in the respect for all people, regardless of religion or gender. We are committed to protect all people of all religions and to value the sanctity of life. All people are equal. All religions are equal. The practice of religion is voluntary and shall not be imposed. The land belongs to no religion and no war shall be imposed on the count of religion. We encourage all governments of the world to adopt this resolution. We hereby submit this declaration to the Israeli government, the Palestinian government and Hamas and ask that they will adopt the same. All right, uh, let's take a vote. Let's have the Palestinian parliament members uh, uh, please vote on this declaration of peace. Palestinian parliament member only. Okay, um, let's publish the result. Um, and um, I am just curious, um, who is the um, Palestinian parliament members who voted yet and no? Could you please uh, identify it's yourself? It's me, Chaim. And um, what area, are you a Palestinian parliament member? Yes, I'm from Gaza. Okay, and all right, thank you. So, uh, and did you swear allegiance to the um, confederation? Well, uh, that's a very difficult question to answer. Well, it's either yes or no. It's not a difficult question. It's either yes or no. No. Okay, so you are expelled. You are not allowed to vote. Thanks. So I, I, I'm just practicing, but I, I want you to stay. Don't take it personally. But in a real life, if you do not, if you do not agree with the constitution, you are not allowed to vote. But stay on to the simulation. Let's I'm have staying. The, I'm not taking it personally. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And let's have the uh, Palestinian Israeli parliament members please vote. Okay, let's publish the results. 100% of the Israeli parliament members voted in favor of the declaration okay. of peace. Uh, let me just go to the Hamas leader. Mr. Hamas leader, are you going to accept this um, declaration of peace? Yes, I accept this declaration of peace. Okay, let's talk to the Israeli prime minister. Are you going to accept this declaration of peace? Yes, it has already been accepted. And let's go to the uh, PA uh, I think I was the Israeli prime minister. Yeah, you are the Israeli prime minister. Oh, somebody and else answered. Abraham, you are the PA. So, yeah. okay. As a PA, you're also accepting this. Okay, but the Israeli prime minister doesn't accept this. It I'm does doing, not? I'm vetoing, yes. Well, you're not allowed to veto. There is no, it doesn't apply to your- Oh, I uh, thought you were asking us if we accept it. Okay, I'm sorry. But, we are not asking you, we're not giving you a veto power. We are just saying that as part of the declaration, we, we think you should make the same declaration to your people, but. Oh, I will, I am, I, I will not for one purpose. The, the land belongs to no religion. And um, this, I think my people will have a problem with this because, um, and including okay. my Muslim uh, constituents and Christian constituents, that there are certain sites and places that belong to those religions and I need to respect their faith. 
Okay, so so we will you accept this amended declaration of peace, where it says uh, the practice of religion is voluntary and shall yes. not be imposed. We respect the connection of all religions to the land and no war shall be imposed on the count of religion. We respect the connections of all of them. I would, um, honestly, I would prefer to see a little bit more stronger language for re certain religious sites like Nazareth and Bethlehem for Christians, the Kotel to the Jewish people and the, um, the, uh, the, 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 um, the Masjid al-Aqsa for the Muslim people. I believe that those sanctuaries should be connected specifically to those religions to have the right to, uh, to those. Okay, so, so you are not accepting uh, the Declaration of Peace and you are not accepting oh. the amended Declaration of Peace. Yes, it needs to be more specific in my opinion for- Okay, my... um, all right. So um, since you are not given a veto power, and it's, it's a declaration, it's an abstract yeah. declaration. I think that it will work against you with your own constituents, but I'm not gonna argue with you about sure. that. That's your political decision. Sure. Let's go to um, just one more time. Uh, if you want to do the interpretation, please go to Arabic, to the interpretation uh, icon in English and Arabic, all of them in the interpretation icon. Uh, um, Tahsin, could you make that announcement? Okay. Um, the first legislation that we are actually giving a um, veto power to the governments of Israel and Palestine is teaching uh, tolerance and understanding. Um, Libby, could you read that, please? Both educational systems to teach tolerance in their public schools. Devote a certain number of hours for both sides to teach the history of the Israelis and the Palestinians. <laughs> prioritizing teaching Arabic and Hebrew in public schools to achieve proficiency of both languages by Israeli and Palestinian students. Create a mutual task force to ensure the teaching of both languages. Educators to draft textbooks together and arrange for a regular exchange of teachers. Public media on both sides to provide fair and equal coverage daily for teaching tolerance. IPC as facilitator to ensure that both sides are fairly represented. And we hereby submit this legislation to the Israeli government, the Palestinian government and Hamas. We bestow upon them a veto power which may be exercised in the next 60 days. Does anyone have any questions regarding this legislation? Okay, let's take a vote. Let's have the um, Palestinian parliament members vote first. Let's publish the vote. 100% of the Palestinian parliament members voted in favor of this legislation. Let's have the Israeli parliament members vote. A hundred percent of the Israeli parliament members voted in favor of this. Uh, let's have uh, let's ask the Hamas leader, are you going to veto this legislation? No. Let's have the um, uh, Israeli prime minister, are you going to veto this legislation? I will not veto this legislation. I support and the it. PA, uh, parliament, a PA uh, leader, are you going to veto this legislation? No veto. Okay. So let's go to uh, Mr. Kutab and uh, get his opinion regarding what you've just seen that we passed an important legislation because both sides said that they are not teaching, that the other side does not teach 
uh, tolerance and understanding. I like it very much. Uh, in fact, uh, at one time I suggested uh, something like that uh, during the negotiations of the Cairo Agreement. And, and I suggested it on the basis of reciprocity and the Israeli uh, negotiators refused. Uh, and the reason was because I said, I believe in peace, I'm a pacifist. And uh, I believe we should teach our children peace and nonviolence. Uh, because he was talking about uh, uh, changing curricula in the Palestinian schools, which he thought taught incitement. I said, beautiful, let's teach peace for both sides. And I uh, mentioned to him the pre-army courses that are given in, in, in Israeli high schools. And he immediately says, stop, don't talk. Let's drop this subject. I said, but we want to teach our children peace. He says, no, no, no. We'll teach our children what we want. You teach your children what you want. Uh, so uh, I know for a fact that during actual real life negotiations, this suggestion was made uh, to the Israeli side uh, and was flat shot down. But do you realize the political implication of, of rejecting this when you have 5 million people voted for parliament? It's completely different when you, than when you have Israelis and Palestinians negotiating with each other. Absolutely true. This is one of the beauties of uh, playing those games, which is why I wanted the game to be more realistic and which why I thought the game was fundamentally flawed uh, because it did not reflect reality. However, uh, I'm totally in favor of, of something like this and it can be proposed and it doesn't need uh, any radical changes in governance on both sides to make their curricula subject to some kind of neutral uh, body that examines the curriculum and sees who actually teaches tolerance and peace and who doesn't. All right, uh, let's go to the next legislation. And um, the, these are two legislations that are going to, we're gonna pass at the same time. Uh, the first one is converting Kalandia Checkpoint into an education and commerce center. And the next one is joint economic zone that's between Gaza and Israel. Uh, Libby, do you mind reading it, please? Located on the main road between Ramallah and Jerusalem. Convert the checkpoint into an education and commerce center. Construct a construction of state-of-the-art hospital. Reduce unnecessary hardship and congestion at the checkpoint without increasing security risk. Convert the entire area into an education and commercial zone. Expansion of the number of entrances and exits. Fast lane for frequent travelers. Managed by the Confederation Police Force. We hereby submit this legislation to the Israeli government, the Palestinian government, and Hamas. We bestow upon them a veto power, which may be exercised in the next 60 days. Okay, and the joint economic zone, the, that's the um, twin legislation. Okay, let me read it. Joint economic zone between Israel and Gaza exclusive IPC management and control. It will have a common in, uh, economy with education, industry, agriculture, sewer treatment, desalination plants, solar farms, wind power and green energy, international airport and seaport, equally accessible to the Israeli and Palestinian. All of it will be managed exclusively by the Israeli-Palestinian Confederation which is the government that we just uh, elected. And we now submit both legislation to the Israeli and the Palestinian governments for veto. Um, do I, are there any questions regarding these two legislation? This one on Kalandia and this one on Gaza. Yes, as a Palestinian uh, representative Ramallah, 
which would be directly impacted by this. Many of our uh, citizens are uh, very religious <clears throat> and that uh, pray every three hours roughly. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, would the, this economic zone with this area accommodate uh, worship for all parties? Would there be uh, separate oh. religious uh, entities to accommodate their religious interests? So what is the question? Would there be separate areas and or locations to accommodate the religious interests of the citizens who are involved in this area? There'll be thousands of people employed here, but some of whom have to pray every three hours and- uh, Oh my God. And different, but religion is always a major con conversation in the oh reality God. as Mr. Katab is talking about. Religion, okay, so religion this legislation- this conversation. Uh, this legislation talks about fast lane for frequent travelers. So if, you're, if your constituents travel from Ramallah to Jerusalem, they will be able to get a fast lane uh, permit because they frequently travel to holy places in Jerusalem. So I think that, that would um, uh, accommodate your constituents very well. That's, well. For, that's for transit, the people traveling, but the, the, the impact and the size of this situation is going to be thousands of employees. I They're think he's talking about the joint zone. He's not talking about Columbia. Both, both, both. So, well, look at look at the joint zone. The joint zone is going to have thousands of employees. So, and what is your at, question, uh, Jay? Where how how are the religious groups going to practice their religion if they're work on a work site? If they have to pray. Well, about the the um, the joint police force will be managing all the religious sites. We have legislation coming up on that, um, on, the joint, on joint police force. So right now it's about the area itself, making it easier and more accessible and opening it up from being a military zone into a joint economic zone. So let's take a vote. Have the question. Palestinian parliament members. So, jo Joseph Jonathan raising his hand. Jonathan uh, it's Kutan. a question. Yeah. Who gives those permits for access? Mm, Israel or the joint force or the Palestinians? We do. We are the joint economic. We Who's are me? the. You give you give access to Jerusalem through Kalendia without reference to Israel. Wonderful. Correct. We will. We will work. Wonderful. We have a, a, a legislation for a police force afterwards, but let's go to the to the joint economic zone first. Let's have the Palestinian parliament members vote. This is for the joint zone or the Colombia. Both the joint economic zone but and the um, how can you vote for both? I don't understand that because it's two different things. Okay, let's have the uh, okay, let's start with the Kalandia. Let's vote on Kalandia first. Palestinian parliament members, please vote. on Kalandia. Do you agree with the legislation, Palestinian parliament members? Okay, uh, 13, uh, so 100% of the Palestinian voted in favor of Kalandia. Let's go to uh, Israeli Palestinian parliament members. A hundred percent of the Israeli published a vote. A hundred percent voted in favor. And let's go to uh, Gaza. Let, uh, answer yes or no on Gaza joint economic zone. Palestinian parliament member. That's for Palestinian parliament. Okay. I published a vote, 100% Palestinian parliament members voted in favor. Let's go to the Israeli parliament members. Uh, 
Let's end the polling, share the result. 100% of the Israeli parliament members voted in favor. Uh, let's go to the Israeli and the Palestinian and Hamas leaders, ask you, are you gonna veto any of these two legislations? Hamas leader. The Hamas leader will not veto the legislation. Okay, let's go to the Israeli prime minister. Are you going to veto any of these two legislation? The joint economic zone, I would not veto it, but the Kalendia one, I would veto it for the reason is that I, um, in my scenario, I was voted by a pro-peace uh, party. To me, the Kalendia checkpoint and the wall there is absolutely against peace because it separates Palestinian neighborhoods. If we want to build walls around our neighborhoods, we will build them around our neighborhoods, Israeli neighborhoods, not the Palestinian ones. So, so me, okay, let me speak as a Palestinian for two seconds. I would never accept this because- it, Wait, 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 wait. No, you, you cannot just, have two heads. Okay, I know, okay. Then I'm going to not accept it for the sake of peace. And because I believe in uh, that is against, it, against the peace process to have a checkpoint, any type of checkpoint, even with fast pass between Palestinian neighborhoods. As an Israeli prime minister. Yes, because I think it's gonna lead to problems in the future to our, to our but you are, But you are keeping checkpoints there now that are military fortress type. Absolutely. And are, aren't you a, being hypocritical? As a pro-peace prime minister, we would work to remove it because the, a solution for peace means the removal of checkpoints and military um, walls, I mean walls and checkpoints. Okay, but, but we are not preventing you from removing it. You, you're being very hypocritical. You're saying that you... No, I, I, I'm being pro-peace. An Israeli prime minister who was elected by a pro-peace, uh, 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 pro uh, people who want peace, and any okay. checkpoint, even a Mr. limited prime checkpoint... Prime Minister, we are not preventing you from demolishing those checkpoints tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But I think that you are being very Sorry. hypocritical by mm -hmm. saying that you want to do more than what you are actually doing. But let's go to the PA uh, parliament member, a parliament a PA leader. Are you going to veto any of these legislations? No veto. Okay. So we have these two legislation. Uh, uh, Gaza passed. Kalandia has not passed. Let's talk to the... Um, Mr. Kutab and get his opinion. Yeah, the, the, the problem with Kalendia, before I get to Gaza, uh, you have a lot there that doesn't relate to the reality. The reality is that the Kalendia checkpoint is part of Israel's determination that nobody comes into Israel, which included the annexed Jerusalem, without permission. Until you undermine that idea, the question is not to beautify it and to make it quicker and to make it less humiliating and, and to make it nicer. Uh, you, you must get to the fundamental problem, which is that Israel is restricting Palestinians from coming into what it considers Israel, including Palestinian neighborhoods, including East Jerusalem. That's the problem with Kalendia. Uh, to to but, pretend uh, that the problem you, is... You just heard the Prime Minister of Israel saying that he wants to demolish those uh, um, checkpoints. At all. That's Completely. much more a peace oriented than to try and beautify it and, and make it uh, more electronic and make it uh, quicker and, and build a hospital there, which I think was, was, was mentioned. Right. It, it seems to me that the purpose of the exercise should be uh, to think in new terms of new realities, not to uh, confirm what exists, refuse to challenge what exists, and try to make it a little bit prettier. That's my problem. Okay. So yes, let's go to the next. I could make a comment as PA representative to to uh, Mr. Kachab's uh, view, and that is that your <clears throat> position is very well accepted and should be taken up for consideration by the Confederation, and that that's how it can proceed. But otherwise, we're dealing with uh, uh, existing- Okay, uh, let's go to the next uh, legislation, and that's a Confederation police force. 
Uh, Libby, could you read that, please? Equal number of Israeli and Palestinians on each level, different and distinct uniforms, <laughs> independent of the Israeli and Palestinian security forces, in cooperation with the separate Israeli and Palestinian authorities, address sensitive religious cultural and language requirements, facilitate the operation of the joint economic zones, investigate corruption by administrators who refused to teach tolerance, <laughs> investigate allegations of intolerance and racist hate crime against Israelis or Palestinians, assist in managing checkpoints guard the parliament building and threats against members of the confederation and facilitate access to and safety of religious facilities. And we submit this legislation to the governments and Hamas and bestow upon them the veto power which they may exercise in the next 60 days. Does anyone have any questions regarding this legislation to create a common police force? Yes, yeah, uh, I have a question. Yeah, Joseph, what's the re what's the geographical area we're discussing here? The, the entire West Bank and uh, Israel, or just the uh, security zones and border areas only? What is the geography here? Um, it, it's specified in general terms what would be the duties of the police force, but it says that it's in cooperation with the separate Israeli and Palestinian authorities. So the geographic areas will be determined <laughs> specifically with the Israeli and the um, uh, Palestinian uh, governments. Okay. Well, that's what they call a Gordian knot. I'll leave it at that. Well, the um, FBI does not have specific um, uh, 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 a geographic area except yes, the entire United, United States. The this FBI, police the force FBI. will also have a, a, a geographic area, which is the entire Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza. The FBI is U.S. territories in the continental and all United States territory. Right, and this oh. thing, and this confederation will be the exact same thing: the entire oh. area of Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza, and Jerusalem. Well, I would. I mean, I would vote for this at this point, but in implementation, Mr. Katab's point of view on reality, you have to narrow it down, let's say a beginning stepping zone and just discuss uh, some uh, uh, neutral, uh, calm area to start with to see how it works. Okay. And, uh, I, no, it's not going to be the. Uh, okay. I, I don't think you understand that this has to do with legislation that has been passed by the Confederation. They only have authority to enforce legislation that has been passed by the Confederation. Okay, let's leave it. Which was given to them with the consent of the Israeli and the Palestinian governments. Okay. So they cannot stop traffic. They cannot stop a bank robber. They cannot stop anything unless it was specifically given to them with specific uh, power. That's fine. The general concept is fine. I agree. Okay, Can let's I ask go a question? I would, I, yeah, I also have a question. Yes. Um, Hello? Um, I, want, yeah. I want to ask a simple question. Um, well, let's, ha let's, ask, let's have you ask the question. Okay, what I'm missing here is gender-based violence. It's not just racism, but it's very specific also concerning um, violence against women, which is a very specific type, and I think it should be specifically mentioned. And it's totally lacking here. It says racist hate crime against Israelis, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, sensitive religious, cultural, and language requirements, but it says nothing about gender-based violence which is something we all know happens, and it, I think it should be included. And I'm, I'm sorry, could you, could, could you, uh, you have a comment or you have a question? Uh, well, it's a question why it's not included. 
why is it not included? It, it's what's, not mentioned. What's not included? Gender-based violence, okay? Address sensitive, religious, cultural, and language requirements. But it's, well, it, and that, it kind of hints at all kinds of sensitivities. Okay. All right. And then uh, we have racist hate, hate crime, but there is no mentioning of crime against women. And as this is a serious problem in both society. And as women often, when they encounter security forces, are at a very <laughs> unpleasant, um, how to call it? Yeah, uh, I, okay, I, so Judith, this should Judith, somehow I, be incorporated. Are, are you Israeli or Palestinian parliament member? I'm a Palestinian Israeli, a Palestinian uh, um, citizen of Israel. No, right now, are you a Palestinian parliament member or Israeli That's what parliament? I said. I'm an Israeli the parliament, I'm an Israeli parliament member. Um, okay. So you are, you are Israeli parliament member. What I suggest you do is you um, draft a legislation. I think you're making a very important point. And I suggest you draft legislation specifically for the point you're raising. And um, we would be happy to present that. But okay. to hold us to the standard that we have to be perfect is not fair. So if you, you are a Palestinian parliament member, please do your job and draft legislation that deals with the issues you are raising. Let's have a vote. Uh, just a second, I had a question. You said to wait. Uh, could I ask it? You have a question, please, yes. Yeah, uh, bearing in mind that uh, the UN has decided a number of times that uh, all settlements are illegal. Can the uh, Confederation Police Force act against the settlers, um, not just in terms of uh, their daily um, activities, which are hate crimes against Palestinians, but actually against the set the actions of settlements, the the, the fact that the settlements are against international law if there is legislation that specifically allows them to act in a certain way against specific individuals or specific groups absolutely that could be against uh, extremist groups against uh, on both sides so it would be required to pass legislation and that legislation would be submitted to the Israeli and the Palestinian governments. And if they are given that power, absolutely, yes. Let's have a, a, Joseph, a, a Joseph, vote. Joseph, one comment, please, if I may, uh, on this legislation. This legislation is totally silent on the issue of uh, crime prevention. Who is going to uh, take care of uh, uh, controlling uh, crimes in those areas. Are you going to assign it to the specific Israeli police or Palestinian police and the IPC police will have no jurisdiction over that? Correct. The, uh, the Israeli police remains the police of the Israeli people. The Palestinian police remains the police of the Palestinian people. They have crime issues. They have to deal with it but the Confederation police has to deal, it, it's tailor-made right now to deal with the Israeli-Palestinian sensitive issues and to try to create as much of an atmosphere <coughs> to, um, to have the uh, no veto by the governments. So Let's if, take a if, vote. The, if the IPC police witnessed a crime in their jurisdiction, they should not, they cannot intervene to prevent that crime at all until the local police uh, arrives? Is that the idea? No, that's not the idea, but they do not have jurisdiction to arrest based on, uh, uh, based on, uh, on uh, crime by itself. So they do not have that jurisdiction. Okay. That's correct. Uh, detention Question. until... Let's take a vote. Let's have the question. Palestinian parliament Just members vote on this police force. 
question, not a comment. Uh, does the Confederation police force have priority over the local police courts in areas under its jurisdiction if there's a conflict? No, if there is a conflict, the, yeah. according to the constitution, the Israeli government and the Palestinian governments have priority over the confederation. But the so police, I mean, if there, okay. So the, 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 so the, the confederation is, by virtue of the fact that they, they need to give a veto power, they do not have priority. Let's take a vote. Sorry. For the Palestinian parliament members, please vote. Okay. Um, 88 percent, publish the result, please. 88% of the Palestinian parliament members voted in favor. Um, let's go to the Israeli parliament members. Okay, let's uh, publish the results. 86% of the Israelis uh, of voted in favor of the parliament members. So let's go to Mr. Kutab and ask his opinion regarding this legislation that was just passed. Yeah, I, I was surprised by your answer. I thought that in areas within the jurisdiction of the Confederation police, they would have priority over the local police. In, Correct. The, in the United States, for example, uh, if the FBI can come in and enforce uh, desegregation, uh, and uh, the local police have to step aside. But I thought you said this is the opposite here. No, the, the police force has the power to enforce legislation that was passed by both sides. If Correct. it hasn't passed by both sides and, and, the, and, the, and, and it did not uh, overcome a veto power, it does not have a, uh, uh, it does not have the power to act. So the police Correct. force, the Confederation police force cannot go into Gaza and arrest Palestinians for stealing a car. They cannot go to Tel Aviv to arrest Israelis for stealing a car. They can only go, they can only act based on what specifically is given to them, the, the jurisdiction that is specifically given to them. All right. Let's go to uh, the Israeli Prime Minister. Mr. Prime Minister, are you gonna veto this legislation? I'm gonna, yeah, yeah as, uh, again, I'm, uh, I'm acting as a pro-peace Prime Minister. I'm, I'm sorry? I said, again, I'm gonna act as a pro-peace pro Prime Minister. The only problem I have with this legislation is the part that mentions checkpoints. We, if, as long as the checkpoints are not within Palestinian areas. I, I, if they are within Palestinian areas, then I would not. Uh, I would veto this. If it's between areas, between Israeli Israeli controlled areas and Palestinian controlled areas, then I would go for it. Okay, uh, the checkpoints are the checkpoints that you created. But um, so. Joseph, you muted yourself. Okay, well, you're saying we will, re we will replace your soldiers with an IPC soldiers. And remember that some of the IPC police are Israelis. They're trained. Some of them were in the Israeli army. Let's go to the uh, Hamas leader. Are you going to uh, uh, veto this legislation? Hamas leader. And let's go to the PA leader. He's Are you muted. going to veto this legislation? He's muted. No veto. No, wait a minute. The Hamas leader is not muted. I have a question about the legislation. 
Okay. The Hamas leader yeah. has a question? Yes. The question What's your is, question? will the jurisdiction of this IPC police force or army or whatever it is, I'll be to confront illegal Israeli settlements? Well, if you pass legislation about uh, Israeli settlements and it would uh, call them illegal and you both the Israeli and the, Pal and the, um, um, uh, they are Israeli illegal. and the Palestinian parliament agree to that, yes. It's, it's all based on jurisdiction. But you didn't tell us what the jurisdiction is. Um, in other words, well, uh, right I'm now the jurisdiction the... is the um, the joint economic zones. Um, it ha it's the jurisdiction is um, no no sensitive my, my religious question... areas, cultural areas. My, my question is different. The jurisdiction of the Palestinian government's legislation, where does it have jurisdiction? In other words, is it in the whole West Bank and Gaza or what? Because there is no, currently, there is no line between Israel and Palestine. We are not, this is not legislation about the jurisdiction of the Israeli or the Palestinian governments. This is about the jurisdiction of the Israeli Palestinian police force. Hmm. That's yes, all. Precisely. As PA representative, I'm, uh, I wish to point out that uh, re reference has been made to judicial decisions and not, uh, to, and once a decision, decision is made, it is enforced by the police force. But it's a, a judicial question as to which property belongs to whom. And that is another uh, piece of legislation, of course. So we can proceed. Oh, okay, why, so why not just remove the line that says assist in managing checkpoints? Because we want to make the checkpoints uh, much more humane to Palestinians. If you want to make them hum humane, remove them. I'm proposing that we remove them. As the Prime Minister of Israel? As the pro-peace Prime Minister of Israel with a coalition of okay. uh, pro-peace people, uh, yes. Okay, we don't want, we as the peace, the, the, prime, the peaceful Prime Minister of Israel does not want to uh, send his boys to, and girls and women okay, but to, to stand Nasir, at checkpoints. With all, Nasir, with all due respect, mm -hmm. in my opinion, you are not assuming the personality of the current Prime Minister. Oh, am I supposed you to are assuming a hypothetical prime minister mm -hmm. that never existed. You are basically okay. assuming a Palestinian uh, personality into an Israeli prime minister. You would not see an Israeli prime minister at this time okay. saying, let's remove the checkpoints and insisting on that. Your position is, it does not reflect, and you are told Mm -hmm. At the beginning, when you are asked to be, to be, to assume the personality of the current okay. prime minister. Okay, I ag I agree. I agree. Okay. All right. But so I can't I see. I can't speak? see a. Yeah, go ahead, Jonathan Quattab, because I can't see a Palestinian leader or Hamas leader agreeing to this. But I guess that's yeah. okay. I. Uh, when do I get to speak? It's been a two-hour uh, okay. simulation. There's only fifteen minutes left. When do I get to speak? Okay, right now. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to stop sharing and, I, and give you the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I agreed to join this simulation uh, because I uh, thought it was an interesting experiment, even though I thought it was fundamentally flawed. Uh, so I want to say some good things about it and why I think it is wrong. Three good things about it. First, it helps people think of new models because the current models are not working. The two-state paradigm has failed us both as a vision and in practice. 
So I like it that people are starting to think of new things. So that's in favor of your uh, project. But for that same reason, it's fundamentally flawed because it seems to be an attempt to beautify and preserve the existing paradigm rather than change it. So uh, the first point I made is a positive one. The second point that I made, which I think is a good one, is that you think that any new uh, arrangement can be preserved through structures, laws, and constitutions which take precedence over the existing structures. I fully agree. If we are going to change things in Israel-Palestine, we need new laws that constitutionally challenge and undermine the existing ideologies on both sides, that enshrine equality, that prohibit discrimination and racism, that guarantee rights for individuals. This is not the case in Israel today. This is not the case in the Palestinian territories today. So we do need new structures and laws and constitutions play an important part of it. Third, also a positive thing. I like the fact that through play acting and simulation, you are forcing those who agree to participate in the game to think about other people. Uh, Mr. Kutab, can, I, can I just ask you, can you have a better view of the screen because we only see half okay. your face? Sorry. Uh, you are forcing people to have empathy. You are forcing Palestinians to think like Israelis. How would Israelis think about this? You're forcing Israelis to think about people in Gaza. How would they think about that? Uh, this is a beautiful part of simulation is that it imposes empathy, which is a very big requirement for peace, which is why this game, I think, has merit. For these same three reasons, I think your idea is fundamentally flawed because it begins by assuming the existing situation and while pretending to try to change it, it's really breathing new life into it by making it slightly more uh, reasonable, slightly more humane, slightly more open uh, to liberality, when in fact the system has proven that it is neither humane, nor liberal, nor democratic, nor peace-oriented at all. So for this reason, I think the experiment is fundamentally flawed. The idea of Israeli-Palestinian confederation starts with the assumption that there is something like a Palestinian government, or maybe two, one separately in the West Bank and another in Gaza. And there is another something like a, a state of Israel government when the reality is there's only one government and it's the Israeli government that chooses to rule the whole of Palestine, Israel under different regimes and plays around with a pretense that the Palestinians have their own government, which we don't. And the Palestinian authority is not, neither is Hamas. Uh, so uh, this model, I think, is fundamentally flawed and it can be improved, but to be improved, it has to be radically changed. Uh, it's, it's still a fun one. It's like, as I said, like playing chess uh, with different pieces, with, with uh, four castles uh, and no uh, bishops, or more accurately, uh, with one of the castles of the white uh, side being controlled by the black side. Uh, so that one side has three castles and the other has only one. Uh, it's a fun game, I think, for people who are intellectually minded 
it's it's it may be interesting, but it does not reflect reality. The reality on the ground today is that there is only one government between the river and the sea, and it's the Israeli government, and it's Knesset passes laws and creates structures which it imposes on Palestinians in the West Bank, different rules which imposes on Palestinians in Gaza, again, different rules which it imposes on Palestinians in East Jerusalem, and other rules that it imposes on uh, Arabs who are Israeli citizens of Israel. This is a really difficult uh, reality to acknowledge, but we must acknowledge it if we want to change it. Thank you very much. All right, uh, let me ask you a question. Please. Going back to the criteria that we um, discussed earlier, and that is uh, the three criteria. Is it going to make peace? Is it, first of all, is it implementable? Is this, it's is this based plan on wrong, Im it's implementable? Based on wrong assumptions. So how can it be implemented? It's based well, on the assumption that there is a Palestinian government in Ramallah. There isn't. Okay, but it's, uh, uh, Mr. Kutab, the first question is, could the IPC formula um, attain peace? So you say... I don't think so, because it's based on the wrong assumptions. It's based on okay. a two-state so so framework, go back to the which has shown itself not to work. Okay, so let's go to the assumptions. Um, is the assumption of online election, um, is that a unrealistic uh, assumption? I think if the Israeli uh, Knesset passes it, no, it's not. Uh, I'm sorry, Israeli I didn't hear you. Knesset Are you saying that that's... To allow a, an online voting uh, throughout uh, the territories under its control, yes, it's implementable. But it cannot be done if the Israeli Knesset decides we don't want the Palestinians to have elections or we want to have elections in which uh, okay. Hamas doesn't run okay. or nobody that's right. vetted by us is allowed okay. to run. I don't, think, I don't think we understand each other. Is, okay. an, is creating online election for 14 million people, is that realistic or not? Absolutely, if Israel allows it. It, it is realistic. If Israel allows it. Well, how would Israel not allow it easily i'm sorry easily by by arresting anybody who runs in elections that they don't approve of whether they win or lose okay simply so you know when democracy started before democracy started we had a king and someone suggested let's instead of having a king we'll have democracy and the people who objected to a democracy at that time said the exact same thing that you are saying now, that the king will not allow it. What is the difference between what you are saying now and what the people who created democracy said when democracy was created? What is the difference? You're basically saying the exact same thing, which is question we have to power. be afraid it's a question of the of Israeli power. government that they will not allow it. And therefore, we're not going to decide anything. No, I did not say that. Of course, well, you we said can the decide Israeli things. government will we not allow it. We can decide to resist. I'm sorry? Very simply. We don't accept. We, 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 we resist the occupation. We resist. The rule okay, by I, I'm here very, very specific. You, I ask you a very specific question Correct. Is an online election for 14 million people? You are saying that's not realistic because the no, Israeli I'm saying I'm saying it absolutely can be done. 
technically it can be done. Okay. Uh, All right. So, so, so we got that through. So you agree that 14 million, we can have the election. Technically it could be done. Okay. Absolutely. All right. So let's go to the next one. And that is, do you think it's unrealistic that out of the 14 million people, 5 million people would vote? No, it's very realistic. Very realistic. Okay. So do you think it's unrealistic that 300 parliament members will be elected? Again, very realistic that Israel okay. allows it. So all of these assumptions you agree are very realistic. Correct? If Israel allows it, yes. Okay. Absolutely. I asked you a question and now you're throwing the state of Israel into it. I'm Absolutely. asking regardless of Israel, are these things are are these things realistic? Regardless, how can you disregard Israel? If 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 elections well, are held and you Israel have, you can you can prohibit Hamas from running online election. You you're basically saying your only thing is that makes it unrealistic is the fear of the government of Israel. Correct. Okay. And first of all, why would Israel object to this? Because they have legitimate power. reason would Israel have to because object? They have to power. This? Because they have power against their interests. Come on. Because what they have would, the power. What is the um, why would Israel object to this? You're assuming it well, but I'm asking you, why would they object to it? Well, I think that the ideology that realizes that wanted to create a Jewish state and disregarded the existing Palestinians uh, was based on power. And I think it has failed. And I think it's good to think of new things and to persuade people to think of new things rather than continue with what has failed. Mr. Kutab, I, I, I apologize. I don't want to put you on the spot. I realize that Please I do. do put you on the spot, but you are Please a lawyer. You can, you can handle being put on the spot. What would, what would you imagine Israel would say if we start the election tomorrow? What would be their um, uh, reasonable explanation to object to this? Could they come up with an, a reasonable explanation? Not one that would uh, convince you or me. What about convincing the entire democratic world or their own people? They will say, uh, these are terrorist organizations. We will not allow them to run for elections and to but take we, away our okay, freedom but, but this through is the ballot an election box. For, this is an election for Israelis and Palestinians together. It's not a terrorist organization. It's, we have everything online. All right, I, I think, no I, problem I, think calling... I crossed examined you enough. Let's go. No, to... no, no, no. They have no problem calling Al Haq a terrorist organization. You think that they would have any problem calling Hamas and anybody else who runs for elections on, on, on a political platform that they don't like? Okay, calling look, look we have a no different. We, we have, I don't think that the Israeli government will be able to. Uh, stop this election. I don't think they will have legitimacy to do that. I don't think they have the legal means to do it or the technical means to do it. We live in a different, we live in a different era in the world. It used to be, election used to be done by stones and, and, and rocks. And then it went into paper. Now we can use the internet to create a new reality. And I don't think that the government of Israel has the legitimacy, the, uh, the power, the legal means to stop that. But I'm gonna uh, stop talking and let's, let's have people ask you questions. Please. Um, so I, uh, let's go to 
uh, participants. Um, okay, we'll have Amnon first, Charles Frederick second, and Abraham third. And if you, if more people want to ask put questions, me on, will, you, will you add me, Joseph? Will you put me at the end of that list, please? It's Olivia. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you'll okay, speak after you. Jay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Joseph. Amnon. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, Mr. Kutab, uh, salam alaikum. Uh, I uh, have a question. In your opening statements, uh, you said, and I, I'll quote, uh, that Israel created and controlled uh, the Palestinian Authority and Hamas. So my question to you, sir, is do you think any Israeli in his right mind will create an organization that specifically declares that it wants to uh, destroy Israel? Uh, how is it possible that Israel created Hamas, and we all know that it's not correct, and, uh, and what did you base your statement on? Are there any facts to support your statement that Israel create and control Hamas? Thank you. Yes, although it's irrelevant, the historians have told us that in its early days, Israel thought that Hamas is a nice counterpart to the PLO, which was secular. And in its early days, Hamas played a decisive role in splitting up uh, the, the Palestinian national camp. Later, of course, it became an enemy of Israel and Israel realized that they had made a mistake in creating Hamas, and then it became an enemy. Right now, Hamas plays a very interesting role for Israel in, it help, in that it helps separate the West Bank from Gaza. Uh, but you know that the, from the beginning, Hamas's charter uh, uh, specifically calls for the destruction of Israel and removing all the Jews from that area, you know, from the, from the river to the sea. So I'm not, can, can we focus on the Israeli-Palestinian confederation issue, not on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? Uh, who is right and who is wrong is really not the subject of this um, uh, discussion today. No, I, I just wanted to know, uh, Mr. Kutabs made the statement, what did he base that statement on? Are, are there any facts that Israel created Hamas and controlled Hamas? We, don't, we, don't, we, we know that it's totally untrue. All right, let's go to Charles. <coughs> Charles, can you ask yeah. a question? Okay. Um, well, uh, a, a few things. I wanted to talk generally, if, if that's all right, about uh, what you, you your position. Uh, by the way, thank you so much for agreeing to participate in our simulations. I think it's really uh, important to have voices such as yours, who uh, have a, a very good grasp of everything that's going on in the area. Um, Sun Tzu in The Art of War talks about the fact that uh, if you don't give your enemy a bridge to retreat across, they will fight you to the death. And um, if you look at the situation of Israel today, everything you're saying about their power, their control is of course true, <clears throat> however, we all agree that this is an inhumane situation. And Amnesty International has just come out uh, declaring that the state of Israel is an apartheid state. And the uh, American Secretary of State has been challenged by reporters saying, who denied Amnesty's report saying, well, look, you agree with Amnesty when it comes to China and Burma and this and that, you're citing Amnesty and you're in your State Department reports, and now you say that what they're saying about Israel is wrong. So this situation, uh, as it has progressed, is not static. And the idea that um, there may the Israeli government may have a reason to want to agree to something like the IPC if it sees it as a way that it can continue its control while. Uh, acceding to basically the demands of the international community and the Palestinians. So then it becomes a possibility that the public itself has more leverage to transform both their, both their own ideology and what their government is actually doing. And I'm, I'm wondering if you, if you regard it from that perspective, if you think uh, it has a 
maybe more validity than than you were giving it credit for from at least at the beginning yeah. of this conversation well uh First, my appearing on this uh, program does not endorse the IPC. I think that that's clear. Uh, my objection to the IPC is that it doesn't go far enough. It starts by assuming and not challenging uh, structures which need to be challenged. It starts by prolonging the life of a two-state paradigm that has faltered and collapsed. That is my only objection, but to say that we need to change and that the change has to be gradual, uh, I agree with. And to say that there is more popular support for a just solution than one can see is true. Uh, but but uh, my objection to the IPC model was that it seems to perpetuate a paradigm that has failed us and to keep it, but just make it a little bit nicer by pretending that there is such a thing, uh, uh, at least theoretically as a Palestinian government, which can participate with an Israeli government in coming up with a better solution. The reality is there isn't. The reality is that Israel has the power and has created an illusion on the Palestinian side, which needs to be destroyed and come up with a better vision that serves both Israeli Jews and Palestinian Arabs. Would you be more in favor of it if you thought that it only granted a veto power to the Israeli government and didn't grant it to the Palestinians, considering that the IPC represents all Palestinians and all Israelis together as one nation? I would not be more in favor of it, but I think it would be more realistic. We will be playing chess with, with the regular pieces and not with false pieces that we have chosen uh, that, that are interesting, but not that don't reflect reality. How, how would you then recognize, uh, supposing that something like the IPC wa that. wanted to come in, just one more point, wanted to come into existence, how would you go about acknowledging the power centers on, the Palestinian side, regardless whether you consider them a government or not, um, they would have the ability to interfere, I would think. Yeah, I like, I like very much the idea of elections and democratically electing the representatives of the Palestinian people and the Israeli people. I think that's one of the favorable, uh, positive elements of this model. Um, Mr. Kutab, let me ask you this. If the election took place, would you vote? <clears throat> the IPC? Yes. Would you vote? It's it's based on the wrong assumption. I know. I, but I would say I'm that asking it, you, I, 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 I have. Would you I vote? Have, I am more in favor of voting in anything. We vote for student elections. We vote for municipal elections. I'm not asking you about that. We vote for I'm charitable about, society. About, Palestinians are starved for democracy. Anytime right. you give us a vote, we will vote. Okay, let's go to Abraham, Dr. Abraham yes, uh, Weisfeld. Thank you. Um, Mr. Kutab, uh, I think that there's a, a sort of, a, you know, conflation made of uh, what we are proposing, you know, in terms of constitutional law, as opposed to a political solution. I don't think that we have a political solution. It's something to be invented by a constitutional apparatus, which we're calling confederation right. at this point. So I don't think there's any need for, for any further confusion on that point. But you know, if you wish to consider you know, uh, a political solution that some do you know, called a one state solution, how could this possibly be imposed on Israel other than by means of war? Therefore, the idea, the project of a liberal democratic society in which everybody has equal vote is contradicted by the very means by which it is supposed to be implemented. So that's why I think that that's a utopic, you know, impossible situation and has misled many people to uh, you know, waste their time on. Yeah, well, uh, utopian ideas uh, are, are often challenged as being unrealistic. And the only thing I can say to you is, is to quote uh, uh, Fyodor Herzl, 
if you really desire it, you can make it come about. You do have to have a vision. You do have to have an idea that commends itself to people of goodwill on both sides that we can work towards. So maybe you should read my little book, Beyond the Two-State Solution. It's a very short one. It's just been translated to Hebrew and Arabic. Uh, you can download the English uh, for free from non in, uh, Nonviolence International website. Thank you. Uh, I know about it your is book. a bit utopian, I agree. But it's a vision that we can work towards. Uh, uh, let's go to Jay. I, I'd recommend to you to read my book as well on the Federation. Be glad to. Let's go to Jay Johnson. Jay. Yes, I'd like to uh, actually look directly at uh, Olivia Southward. I think, Olivia, you're in London, aren't you? You're, uh, you're um, muted. You have to unmute. Olivia is in Italy. Okay. I live in Italy. I live in Italy. Yes, hello. Nice okay. to see you. Well, the, the point is, I'm, I'm trying to argue in favor of what I'll call an, a mini IPC, because in Los Angeles, where we are, uh, you know, what, 10 million, 15 million people in LA was in many respects ungovernable. Yeah, what is it? Uh, 20 members of the city council, et cetera. They established two things. Uh, neighborhood councils was one thing where they had local elections in uh, small, uh, relatively small geographic areas based on communities of interest. And consequently, in certain business areas, they came up with business improvement districts where the different merchants would get together on a particular neighborhood uh, as well and uh, organize uh, for the improvement of their area. Now, if you apply the mini IPC idea, I think in very small segments, uh, particularly in border areas, I'm thinking of them tearing down the olive groves where the walls are, as an example, uh, where people could coordinate and work on the real small nuts and bolts, building block, uh, if you will, uh, startup ideas, start small and build and build up. Do we, are those types of things existing in uh, West Bank, uh, Palestine today, number one, and number two, Olivia, in Italy, I suspect they're the same thing. Just like we have members of this group from Madrid and from London, they have these kinds of uh, neighborhood councils and, <laughs> and the business improvement districts that are in many cities throughout the world. Yes, think? I think you're talking about uh, grassroots associations. I do agree with you. They exist in lots of places yeah. in Europe. They can be very successful. Yes, it's, it's a whole separate issue. And, and, and thank you for raising it. Certainly, grassroots associations with the people who want to change their lives, by the people who want to change their lives. Yes, they are very, very interesting. Very interesting. Indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Does Mr. Kutab have any response to that? Do those things exist already or not? I'm not familiar with uh, the Italian uh, things, but I know that uh, many times, you know, you can start small and build big. Uh, my problem is that there has to be a, a basic integrity to the process, that it's not just a fake. That yes, simulations are fun. And, 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 and uh, as I said, I'm in favor of them, but they have to be based on reality and, and not just totally uh, fantasy. Thank you. That was easy. <laughs> Let's go to Olivia. Oh, thank, thank you. Um, have a, oh, sorry. Yes, I'm. Well, um, hello, Mr. Kutab, and thank you very much for being with us and for your generosity of time. I know you're very busy. Well, um, I've read lots of what you've written, and um, I listened with great. In I haven't read your book. <laughs> I do apologize. I've read a synopsis of it in Mondo Vice, and a synopsis written by yourself. And I listened with great interest to a web event. And you were a guest speaker along with um, Jeff Halper and, uh, and a lady, uh, Nora, uh, in, in uh, a US lawyer that represents Palestinian interests at the UN, if I'm uh, quoting, if, I'm, <laughs> if it's correct. Uh, the three of you were very, very interesting. Um, now, uh, I go along absolutely with what Jeff Halper says. And 
any person uh, and, and yourself, there were some slight differences, and the lady in the US, there were some, you know, definitely some differences. But grosso modo, um, uh, what you want in your one state is what any person who believes in justice for human beings, who supports human rights, would, would, would uh, aspire to and would approve right. and would identify with. My question to you, Mr. Kutab, is a little bit like Dr. Weissmann's. Uh, I wonder um, how many Israelis share this vision? That's my rather sad uh, question. Perhaps, perhaps 5%, perhaps 10, perhaps 15, perhaps 20%. I can't answer that. I know there are progressive Israelis, Israeli Jewish people. I know they have lots of wonderful associations. I'm familiar with lots of them. I, I'm in contact with lots of them. I attend their, their web, their webinar, their web events, etc. And you yourself know who they are. I, I, I'm just rather afraid that in the, you know, the, the reality being a very right wing reality with an Arab, uh, you know, with the round, with the new uh, uh, coalition that that yes, that certainly gives me hope. Yes. <laughs> But that was my first question. If I may, uh, how many Israelis share your vision? My second one, Mr. Kutab, is, is, uh, is more complicated. I'll try to make a synthesis of it. Um, I'm sure lots of Palestinians, you are human, you're a Palestinian human rights lawyer, and I'm sure lots of Palestinians um, uh, seek your advice because they want to be defended because their human rights have been violated by other Palestinians, by the Palestinian security, by Palestinian, by the PA security, by the PA police, or by a rather cockeyed uh, uh, judicial system that allows a thing that they call tribal justice. In case our fellow, my fellow participants don't know what it is, it's if there's a murder, they then either turn a blind eye to, or, or, to it, or, or, but no, they allow the family, um, uh, the family of the victim, the family of the perpetrator, of the alleged perpetrator, to come to an, a, an agreement, a money agreement, with the family of the victim, without there being a prosecution. A, shall we say a settlement outside court, which exists in European countries, but not for murder. And I must say that we are not role models. You know that as well as I do. European countries, we are not role models as far as uh, our judiciary system goes. But what happens when these Palestinians come to you to be defended? Um, and also, what happens in cases of embezzlement? I mean, does, is there anything like a, a, an audit commission that, that analyzes who is stealing what? Uh, public money has been embezzled, et cetera, et cetera. You know, there, there's so, I mean, I agree with you. Well, from what I read, I'm an outsider. Absolutely. That uh, the PA and Hamas are subcontractors for Israeli security, are Israel's henchmen. Let's put it that way, very bluntly. OK, but the Palestinian people who is giving them justice or when they come to you as a, a, a Palestinian human rights lawyer, in what courts can you defend them? I mean, th this is for me, I, I wonder. I really, I don't have answers to this. That's why I'm asking you. Well, that's all, and thank you very much indeed. And I, and I do hope more and more Israelis share your vision for the one state solution. And, and I, I found that, that webinar, which was on the 13th of January, I found it you know, very, very lovely. It's the only word I can use. Thank you and bye-bye, take um, care. We have to, we have to uh, make it a little shorter because uh, we've been going over two hours. We have a, Arabic interpreter here who is uh, loyally interpreting and it's really not that fair for, to have him for so long. So let's keep it short. Let's have I'm Chaim sorry, ask Joseph. and then Nasir ask it's and so then- Sorry about that, Joseph. Yeah, no problem. And then have uh, Chaim ask and then Nasir ask and then we'll give the last word to Jonathan and then we'll have to conclude because uh, we have the interpreter here. And um, so Chaim, you're next. Thanks, uh, I'll be very brief. Um, I wanted to ask Jonathan, uh, who I totally agree with, I support the one state solution as an Israeli, as you know. Um, I more uh, inclined, uh, I totally agree with Jonathan rather than with Jeff. Um, I have some problems with Jeff that you had also at that meeting. Uh, so my question is this, 
why did the confederation and federation idea arise now? Um, and do you not think that it is a result of more and more of BDS actions being successful and more and more organizations, international organizations, um, supporting the Palestinian um, um, rights? And um, isn't the confederation and the federation, and maybe there are others as well, um, all these ideas are, in a sense, battles against a single democratic state in Palestine. In other words, all those ideas are undemocratic, as today we have seen, Joseph, when you told the Israeli prime minister, who said that he is a prime minister of uh, a government that wants peace, and you said to him, in this game, uh, that he's not representing the current prime minister of Israel. Of course, you're right. But if he was to represent the current prime minister of Israel, he would have to shoot Jonathan Kutab and all the Palestinians. That's what they're doing every day. So I, I think that your game makes no sense. Um, do you not agree, uh, Jonathan, that this is probably the reason for the confederations yeah. and the federations? Yeah. Okay, At let's go to time... Nasir and then we'll have Jonathan answer because we need to conclude. We are going... Yeah, okay, I'm going to be. I'm, I'm, I, I'm going to be real quick, um, Mr. Kutab. Thank you for everything, and I think I agree with you um, pretty much 100. percent But real quick, and in kind of uh, in addition to what Haim said, what is the real opposition to a confederation or a one-state solution, mostly from the Palestinians, and what is it from the Israelis? Because I tend to see that only older Israelis, more liberal kind of Israelis, but under the younger people, I see them as more. Uh, extremist a little bit. So what is the opposition from the Palestinian side and what is the opposition from the Israeli side as far as the mainstream? Do you see? All right. um, Jonathan, please answer all of these questions and yeah. then we need to conclude. We have yeah. a... Uh, th th this really calls for a much longer uh, uh, session than the simulation, I'm afraid. At one time, the confederation or even the two-state solution itself was a reasonable compromise between Israelis and Palestinians, between the Zionist movement and the Palestinian national movement. Uh, it had its problems, it had its uh, uh, deficiencies, but it, it, it was a workable, realistic solution. It has, been, and, and I, I supported it. I supported the two-state solution for many years even before it became the official position of uh, the PLO and the international community, and to some degree, Israel. Uh, but that has been totally undermined by the facts on the ground, by the settler movement, uh, by the movement of 700,000 Jewish Israelis into the occupied territories, by the creation of whole structures that, that create continuing Jewish domination throughout all of the land. So now we have to think of new things. And we have to think of uh, things that really satisfy both sides. Uh, confederation, in my view, tries to prolong the existing situation, tries to keep the two-state paradigm somehow alive, because it's easier for people to swallow the two-state solution than to swallow a one-state reality. What I did in my little book, and I really suggest that you read it, and it is short, and it has a summary at the back for those who don't want to read the whole uh, book on it. What I really did was avoid the discussions of the past, avoid an analysis of the ideology of Zionism or of Palestinian nationalism. So I should have avoided the question about Hamas and who started it uh, as well. And, and, and instead say, can we address the needs, the hopes, the fears of both sides within a single unitary state? What guarantees are there? How can we deal with the demographic demon? 
Uh, how can we provide security? How can we make this new reality even more attractive than a small, tiny Palestinian state or a, a, a fascist, militarized Jewish state? Can we have something that is better for both Jews and Arabs in all of Palestine, Israel? And I offered a vision. It's not the, maybe the, the, the one and only, but it really gets people thinking of new models of thinking. Because in my view, the existing ideologies have failed us, have failed Israeli Jews and have failed Palestinian Arabs. It's not easy to move beyond. It's easier to just stay with what is and try to tinker with it here a little bit and here. Uh, there a little bit there. So this is my view, and it may not be the best, uh, but but I offer it as 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 a as a goal, as a vision, uh, and and I really like those people who are willing to experiment and think out of the box and challenge existing models. And my critique of uh, IPC has not been that it's willing to change, but that it's not willing enough to change. That it is sort of wanting to hang on to a paradigm which has failed by calling it a confederation and creating an umbrella above it that serves the tribal interests of both tribes rather than try to elevate people above tribalism and invite them into a new humanity that embraces the other and that is not committed to constant eternal warfare between them. So the, these are my views and you're welcome to read them and challenge them and critique them. Uh, and and, and I, I like you know this game that has been offered. As I said, my problem with it is it's, it's, it's a chess game played with different pieces than the regular chess game that people usually use. Um, all right, thank you so much. I would like to make some concluding remarks. First of all, I want to thank Jonathan Kutab. I did read his book. His book is very good. It talks about one state, which, uh, uh, and it describes how it could, not how it could happen, but what would happen when it is a one state. Uh, Mr. Kutab uh, said something right now that he's in favor his problem with the confederation is that it is not changing enough. And that's the, but he never really, you never really suggested how to dismantle the Israeli government, the Palestinian government and the Hamas government. And in my opinion, um, if you are not able to, to do it, then you need to do what's, what's next, what's best under the circumstances. The United States is not a one state, it's 50 states for that particular reason, because the states did not want to dis dismantle themselves. So they came up with a solution, which is a constitution, which allowed 50 states. So how would this happen? Uh, you can look at Estonia. Estonia has online election. I think online election is realistic. Mr. Kutab agreed that it is realistic. We will need grassroots support for this. We will need more education and, and telling uh, and, and recruiting candidates. And we'll need to share this vision on social media. I, we see a lot more people participating in the simulation and I appreciate that. And please continue to participate in the simulation. Contact me, contact the media and tell them that there is another way to resolve this. And, um, I would like to stop share and thank again, Mr. Kutab and thank all of you for participating and um, have a great day. Thank you so much.